so in the class uh, we were discussing about uh, that how to prepare the lesson plan isn't it and uh, in that process uh, we have uh, seen that uh, first of all we have to in that process we have seen that uh, first of all we have to uh, go for the content analysis isn't it content analysis we have to do first and why we are doing a content analysis because through the content analysis we will be able to know what are the different aspect of the content that we are preparing for the lesson isn't it and before that we have also seen that uh, the whole step is uh, comprised of a three step that is the first one is the plan we are planning and then we are executing we are executing means we are delivering whatever we have planned and then we used to have a feedback which is also known as a reflection okay means here we are trying to see that what we have did and how we can improve uh, the whole process of the delivery of the lesson that uh, we have already seen and during the plan we have also seen that the content analysis is one of the aspect next thing that we will be going to discuss here in this series is that uh, what are the different thing that we have to see in the planning phase so one thing that we have seen that the content analysis in the shortcut i will be writing because i am writing by a mouse so writing in detail may not be possible and it will take uh, more time also so in the plan we have seen that the content analysis is one aspect during the content analysis we are also uh, finding the concept and sub concepts and how this concept and sub concept is linked through this we are making a concept map we are making a concept map and i have also given a task of preparing a uh, content analysis of the topic of your own choice uh, uh, the exact uh, that we have done so exact uh, some remark i can give in the class but uh, as of now here i can say that the most of you have uh, performed uh, above average that is a very good performance you have you have i think you have devoted a time for that so uh, that i am happy that uh, you are interested and you are doing because uh, if you are not interested even uh, this class we cannot do so uh, content analysis in the content analysis we are seeing the uh, what are the concept and what are the sub concept and how these concept and sub concepts are linked with each other isn't it then uh, second thing is that when we talk about the uh, planning phase during the planning we have to also see that one thing that we have seen is, is the content analysis the other thing which we have to see is uh, plan other thing which we have to see is the objectives isn't it objective is that uh, for what purpose you are going to teach or in other way you can understand through your teaching what you want to achieve that is the objective isn't it because when you will be going to teach in the classroom you will be not go with the empty mind suppose that you are going to teach a, a gravitation or you want to teach a, a, the geometry in a triangle in the geometry or you want to teach the uh, chemical reaction in the chemistry or whatever you are thinking and uh, so many things are there or in the biology uh, you are going to teach about the different uh, uh, kingdoms of the species isn't it uh, 
so if you are going to teach when you will go in the class you will have a some objective that when this class will end you will achieve those objectives okay so that is and uh, when we fix objective then by fixing the objective we can also fix the teaching 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 learning material like that uh, in order to teach what kind of a teaching learning materials will be required we will see all the dimension and then we will have a uh, brief discussion over it teaching learning then uh, you have to also see that uh, what will be your evaluation plan how you will evaluate that learning isn't it then it will be also required to see what will be the methods of teaching and how you will teach whether you will teach by the demonstration whether you will teach through the discussion or you will give a group activity or you will uh, involve them in the hands on experience so methods of teaching you have to also decide in the planning phase then we have to also decide the learning outcome isn't it so these things so when we talk about the objective objective is that why you are teaching what you want to achieve from your teaching point of view when you will go for teaching then we have to also decide that uh, what are the material will be required for the taking that class that is known as the teaching learning material you may require the chart paper you may require the some uh, models you may require some worksheets you may require some uh, uh, drawing some infographics some flow charts so many things may be required isn't it so all those things which will be required for teaching uh, that particular class that is we will be taking as a teaching learning material and we have to also carefully plan that what are the thing will be required and what thing we have to prepare in order to go for that class and then after the teaching you have to also evaluate to which extent your fixed objective this objective that you have fixed that after the end of class a student will understand no means they you, you will achieve those objective or a student will know those things so to which extent they were able to get to which extent because whatever you have planned every student may not be able to get that uh just wait one minute i think someone is messaging so message i may not be able to see so i will okay because i was in the uh, shared screen so i was not able to see message okay so uh Sir, what is the formula what is the the full form of eb eb that is the evaluation that i have e evaluation okay ev i have written for the evaluation tlm is for the teaching learning material lo i have written the learning outcome okay so uh, thank you sir uh, okay thank you so when uh, the evaluation comes so we have to evaluate that to which extent you were able to achieve your objectives isn't it and it have the another meaning also one meaning is that from the student point of view to which extent students are able to achieve however the second is it gives a reflection on your teaching learning engagement also that to which extent you were able to engage the student in the learning situation suppose that you have thought of doing some activity you have thought of having some uh, problem solving uh, solving session or you have thought of uh, having some demonstration session you may able to do that but how it can be done in a better manner when next time you will be doing the same thing or if you are not able to do 
then what are the steps you can take what are the planning level steps or the execution level steps you can take in order to do it in a better manner the next time you will be going so it gives a reflection to both a student as well as the teacher and it is a beneficial for both so whenever we say that evaluation is the uh, process uh, of the, in the teaching learning uh, process it is the one of the uh, essential component it should not be meant only from the point of a student it is a uh, beneficial for both student as well as the teacher that's why we used to say that uh, evaluation is the integrated process of teaching learning that's why the integration because it is a uh, essential for both teacher as well as the student for both it is uh, very important then the next come the methods that uh, through which method you will be uh, engaging the learner some of the method you may know and some of the method you may not knowing because uh, i think that section is still to be discussed in the class but uh, uh, briefly here we can discuss that method like that uh, through the discussion through the demonstration or through the problem solving or through the inductive or a deductive methods okay because here we are uh, discussing lesson plan specifically from science point of view and in the nature of a science we have already seen that uh, science is a subject where is, there is a necessity of a lot of uh, demonstration lot of experimentation lot of uh, hands on experiences so that a student can construct their knowledge they should not simply memorize and remember or a rote memory should happen rather than they should uh, construct their knowledge and the construction of a knowledge will only happen when they will be engaged actively in the learning process isn't it so uh, the method should be such that for a science specifically when we are talking where the students are having a hands on experiences so that is the method we have to also carefully uh, decide the appropriate method learning outcome i will discuss later on just now but before discussing the learning outcome one thing you remember ki till now i have discussed that the objective is that uh, what you want to achieve teaching learning that what are the material will be required evaluation that you want to know that what is the progress of a student after your class and you also get feedback that how you can engage the learner in the better manner next time when you will be having the same thing or a, another thing also and the method is the method of engagement engaging the learner in the learning environment this uh, we have already seen so you may be thinking that these are the segregated and a separate but always remember these are not a segregated and a separate these are interwined with each other and integrated in the planning integrated and interwined integrated and interwined means they all affect each other for sake of example i am saying that you have set out objective like that developing skill of experimentation some experiment you have planned like that you may want to calculate the value of a small g when you are teaching a gravitation you want to uh, you may have a, uh, one objective that you want to uh, develop the skill of calculating value of a small g among the students so suppose that this is one objective so accordingly you have to choose less uh, tlm because in order to develop you may, may be required to demonstrate and you may also be required to give them opportunity to do have a hands on experience and then when i am coming for a evaluation so evaluation strategy should be also focused that you have objective one of the objective uh, related to skill and when i talk about the method so method should be also 
which gives them opportunity to observe and and have a hands on experience so we have seen that one objective is affecting everything similarly i am uh, talking from a method point of view that how the method can uh, affect the other thing like that uh, one of the method may be uh, engaging the learner in the collaborative learning or a cooperative learning but uh, this is also fact that uh, if i am engaging the learner in the collaborative learning so the objective should be also aligned with the outcome of a collaborative learning and when i am talking about the tlm so tlm should be also in tune with the requirement of a collaborative learning and evaluation should be also which should be in tune of the collaborative learning and the second uh, thought is that uh, suppose that you have decided that no i will teach you have the collaborative learning but the required skill you don't have i am a teacher i want to teach through a collaborative learning because i have heard somewhere that collaborative learning is a one of the best method i have heard of that it is a good method and i have decided that i will uh, engage the learner through the collaborative learning i have written the objective accordingly i have arranged the tlm accordingly i have prepared the evaluation plan accordingly however i don't have a required skill of engaging the learner through the collaborating method or sometime some will think no so nowadays a lot of discussion is going that uh, we can integrate uh, ict in the teaching learning but i don't have a skill of uh, uh, engaging the learner uh, through the ict then even though i am able to write objective i am able to arrange the tlm i am able to uh, devise a assessment plan evaluation plan but i may not go through those methods because i don't have a capacity i don't have a required skill of engaging or i may not be having the uh, uh, appropriate skill of assessment or suppose that i want to teach through the ict but the required tlm is not there i want to engage them through the uh, observation and experimentation but in the uh, physics laboratory or the uh, concerned subject laboratory required tlm is not there isn't it so here in the sort of discussion we find that uh, these all four thing that i have written objective tlm evaluation plan and method they don't exist uh, stand alone rather than they exist uh, intertwined with each other they are integrated with each other and each other affects other tlm will affect the objective because if i don't have a uh, required skill of engaging the learner in the um, collaborative learning so uh, objective related to the collaborative learning i may not have because if i will have then i will not be never able to achieve so i have to drop that isn't it so never think that uh, it exist a uh, stand alone and when we are uh, uh, planning for a lesson we should write these all four very cautiously very cautiously very uh, 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 thinking from a point that uh, whether i have a skill whether the required things are available whether i will be able to do everything you have to see then you have to decide what the objective you will have what the tlm you will have it is not like that you know so everybody is talking about the icd so ict uh, tools i will be using you have to also see the availability you have to also see your skill everything you have to see so that is the connection of these uh, four thing then come to the learning outcome nowadays a lot of discussion is going on learning outcome and uh, if you allow me um, 
one minute sir okay thank you for confirmation when you will open uh, uh, this ncrt website the ncrt website address is ncrt.nic.in for your convenience i am also pasting in the chat box so you will don't have to struggle to google it okay so this is the ncrt website and when you will go down uh, you just go down here you will find a learning outcome you just go here and you will find three learning outcome are available one is the learning outcome at elementary stage another one is for the secondary stage elementary stage is that for class 1 to uh, 8 and it is hmm? hello okay thank you sir okay so you will find that uh, first is that, uh, learning outcome at elementary stage and it is available in the three languages english hindi urdu second one is the learning outcome at a secondary stage that is for class 9 to uh, 9 to 10 and the third win one is that uh, learning outcome at a higher secondary stage this is in the draft form but it will be uh, helpful for you isn't it so my suggestion will be and request will be also to after this class uh, or when you will have a leisure time you just download three pdf and uh, go through it and see that uh, what are the different type of a learning outcome uh, for the different classes in a different subject because it is a, a written subject wise class wise isn't it uh that is so uh when uh, now come to here when we talk about the learning outcome so learning outcomes are uh, written in the already achieved way is uh, you can understand in a very easy manner if you want to understand so let us uh, um, talk uh, in an easy manner one minute So, uh, when uh, we uh, try to understand the learning outcome in a, its a simplest form, you can understand it uh, like that when we go to class. Suppose that this is the class, isn't it? This is the class. This is the class and uh, you go in the class for engaging the learner in the learning environment. So, there is a space before the class and there is a space after the class, isn't it? This is the two space. Here, you have to execute your planning, isn't it? So, this is before planning and this is after planning. But uh, before going to class, here you do a lots of activities. Like that, one activity is the content analysis, which is a part of your planning. Another activity is fixing the objectives, isn't it? Then another objective, uh, another activity is deciding uh, the TLMs. And uh, then object uh, activity is uh, deciding the appropriate methods, appropriate method in terms of the objective that you want to achieve, in terms of the subject you are going to teach, in terms of the class you are going to engage, isn't it? Then you have also decide to the assessment plan isn't it then you have to also decide the uh, this is the learning outcome that i was saying so what is the learning outcome we will understand these are the things we are, which we are doing before going to the class here is the class and here you are executing as per your plan and then you are coming out of the class you are coming out of the class in 
when you are coming out of the class so here what you have here you have that your assessment or evaluation that you have did and through the assessment uh, you are able to know to which extent you are able to achieve the objective because objective you have set so you will know to which extent you are able to achieve your objective in terms of the student's learning achievement learning achievement ke terms mein and the second thing is that your performance also so what was your performance how you can improve it whether it was satisfactory or not what are the things you are required to do when you next time you will go to the class so these things happen broadly in the teaching learning process but when we go to the class we have a objective means through these activities through all those activities you want to achieve something like that you may have a one objective like that uh, uh, one example i was giving the example of a uh, gravitation you are going to teach uh, about the gravitation so one objective you may have that a student defines gravitation that is the student is defining a student identifies the different day to activities where gravitation is playing a role like that the falling of a some object like that some object is stationary at some place or like that the feeling of a weight of a some objects isn't it so these two objective i am thinking that a student defines the uh, gravitation or a student able to uh, say the value of a small g isn't it so these three objective i am keeping so you have this three objective one two three objective you are going to the class you are doing the different activities in order to achieve these three objectives when you will come out of the class you will try to know that whether these three objectives were achieved or not means students are able to define or not students are able to say the value of a small g or not or students are able to find the reason behind the different physical uh, phenomena happening in our day to day life so if they are able to do then you will achieve your objectives one thing second thing is that whether you were able to uh, engage them in a proper way or not or what kind of improvement is required so when you are going with a certain thing that is known as the objective and when you are coming with a certain thing that is known as the outcome because when before going to the class you have thought that a student will be able to define the gravitation and when the students are able to define the gravitation after the class that is known as the outcome the students are able to define so objective which we plan for engaging the learner outcome is that what a student learn in the class or develop the skill after the class that is the outcome so when we talk about the objective it is a beneficial for the teachers because teacher is setting objective that the teacher wants to achieve in the class and after the class also the teacher is through the assessment they are seeing that whether they were able to achieve or not but in terms of when we talk about the outcome outcome is the directly not beneficial for the teacher outcome is beneficial for the agency like that the employers they will be concerned about the outcomes 
like that after finishing this course you will go for the employment as a teacher so those who will be employer they will be concerned about the outcome whether you have a skill or not so that skill will be seen whether you have a domain knowledge or not that domain knowledge will be seen isn't it so outcome is that what a student gets after the class objective is that what teacher plans to achieve through their teaching in the class that is the different however when you will see the different objectives and outcome it will look similar but that differences will be easily pointed out that the language of the first one that is the objective will be that which should be achieved through the teaching in the class however the language of the object uh, outcome will be that what the student has learned in the class so that is the broad differentiation and nowadays uh, we are talking a lot of the outcomes because uh, we believe that after the education a student should be employable it should it should be able to earn their livelihood so without the skill how they will be able to earn their livelihood how they will be employable a skill is required so we are saying ki what kind of a skill what kind of a knowledge what kind of understanding they have when they are coming out of the class and that's why when you will go through the learning outcome that i was suggesting that is available in the ncert website they talk that these are the minimum learning outcome they should have in a specific class in a specific subject minimum that should be there so that is uh, 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 the all thing we have seen for the planning <laughs> now uh in the planning one more thing we will see uh, that uh, how to write the objective like that we have uh, we have just now discussed that uh, we have to write the objectives of teaching isn't it that we have discussed so for uh, writing the objectives uh, there are various uh, taxonomy of learning is available taxonomy taxo nomy taxonomy of learning is available isn't it out of the lot of available taxonomy one taxonomy that is very widely used that is known as the bloom's taxonomy bloom's taxonomy that is widely used bloom taxonomy by uh, was uh, proposed by js bloom bs uh, bloom benjamin s bloom is is it so he has proposed uh, the taxonomy of learning and he proposed that uh, learning is of is comprised of three part that one part is the cognitive cognitive another is the psychomotor psychomotor like like, like that psychomotor and the third one is the affective okay so he defined learning into three part that is the cognitive psychomotor and affective he says that when we learn it should be focused on developing our knowledge understanding problem solving abilities the point which is involving the mental processes like that uh, i was taking example of a gravitation that we are teaching gravitation so when i will teach gravitation what will happen the student will remember the definition of gravitation the student will also be able to solve the different problem related to the gravitation 
So what are involved here? Here it is involved our mental processes. When we are remembering, when we are solving problem, when we are understanding, mental processes are involved. So Bloom was in opinion that when we are learning, then one part is, uh, is uh, where the mental processes are involved. And that's why we must focus in developing the mental processes which is related to that particular content. Then the second thing like that uh, uh, gravitation we are taking but uh, only remembering the definition of a, uh, what is gravitation and uh, solving related problem it does not guarantee that uh, we will be also able to calculate the value of a small g through uh, one very famous ex uh, experiment uh, uh, is for that uh, by hanging a bob uh, which is moving into the uh, simple harmonic motion SHM. It doesn't mean that a student will be able to calculate the value of a small g by their own. In order to enable them to calculate the value, first thing we have to allow them to do the things by their own and if they will be doing the things means the calculating the value by experimenting here the uh, our physical body will be used hands and because uh, for the arrangement and for the uh, allowing the bob to freely execute in the simple harmonic motion all those things our uh, physical body will be required and when we will be doing the things multiple time then we will know how to conduct that uh, experiment that you might have seen in the uh, different field uh, like that when you are learning to drive a two-wheeler first time you may not be able to drive however those who are teaching how teaching you how to drive a two-wheeler they might have told you that you have to sit like that this is the brake this is the clutch this is the accelerator everything they might have to taught you but in the first attempt you may not be able to drive the bike or bicycle it is because that Cognitive knowledge, cog the knowledge which is uh, from the cognitive point of view that you have, but the skill required skill you don't have to execute those uh, knowledge where the physical body is required. So the psychomotor domain, in the psychomotor domain, we learn how to execute that and when it comes to the affective domain so affective domain says that okay so the thing which involves the mental process is okay because that is required the thing which requires our the physical body it is also okay but uh, the higher aim or one of the important aim better to say of the learning is not only developing this skill is also not only having a uh, sound knowledge of the content but uh, it is also required that uh, through the learning we develop a sense of attitude like that when we are studying about the uh, earth or when we are studying uh, about the forest or when we are studying about the animals when we are studying about the plants also have a life we must develop a sense of attitude positive attitude towards the society towards the neighborhoods towards the uh, betterment of the environment because suppose that i know that the uh, um, plant also have a life and plant is very much essential for the survival of a human on the earth but we are uh, degrading the environment we are throwing plastic here and there. We know that throwing plastic is not good. We have a skill of disposing the plastic properly. But we don't have an attitude. So in that case, 
that learning is also not very good and effective so bloom was in opinion that there is a three categories part of a learning that is one of the cognitive another is the psychomotor and the uh, affective you can remember this like that this cognitive cognitive is the mental processes that is my mind hmm. mind and mind is in our head so you can remember that cognitive is related to the head psychomotor most of the work we used to do by hand most of the work lots of work we also do by the foot but most of the work we execute by the hand so you can remember it by hand head hand and this feeling from where feelings comes feelings comes from heart isn't it from where the feeling will come from where the attitude will come that is the heart so head hand and heart these are the three major uh, domain under the bloom taxonomy these are the three major domain and uh, when we come uh, writing the learning objectives and developing the Le objective is called OB. I will do and write uh, developing the learning outcome. We have to focus on each of the domain, not only the cognitive domain, but also the psychomotor domain, also the affective domain, as far as possible. In each lesson, all the domain may not be possible. I agree because when we plan a lesson, lesson planning is for each class so each class may not have all the three domain but as far as possible we have to include all these three domains and second thing like that uh, you are uh, going to teach a uh, chapter 4 so chapter 4 may require four uh, classes so four lesson plan you will have but in each lesson it may not be possible to include the objectives from all these three domains but when we will come to the end of uh, chapter 4 that is chapter 4 was requiring four classes so chapter 4 so when we will see the collective all the uh, lesson plan of a chapter 4 so obviously uh, all the three domain will be possible so you see the possibility because all are required cognitive is also required psychomotor is also required an affective is also required. You cannot ignore. So your uh, planning should include all the things. Isn't it? That was the one of the thing. The next thing uh, which we will be seeing that what are the different subdomains under the uh, cognitive domain. So when we see that uh, you might be seeing the two pyramid. One pyramid is the old version. Another pyramid is the new version. Another is the new version. So this is the new version. New version was proposed by the Anderson. Anderson was the student of uh, Bloom, and Bloom has proposed the original one. This is the original uh, taxonomy uh, under the domain cognitive. These are the subdomain under the cognitive domain, isn't it? So this was proposed by the Bloom. And this is the uh, revision of the original subdomain which was proposed by the Bloom. It is the revision by the Anderson. Anderson was the student of a Bloom. And a more detail you can see in the internet uh, because uh, I think to complete before the 8.30. So little bit I will be going faster. Uh, and after that uh, 8.30 we will have a question answer session also and uh, we can go up to 9 o'clock and after that uh, if still you have a question we will discuss all those questions in the classroom uh, day after tomorrow when we will be meeting. So when he, we see the old version of the 
sub domain and the cognitive domain like that this is the cognitive domain uh, for a psychomotor domain also there are the sub domains and for the affective domain also there are a sub domain so here i will uh, see the cognitive part and uh, so that you will understand how it works isn't it we, we will see it how it works and uh, the handouts which i have given that already have uh, the psychomotor and the affective domain you go through that and if you have a question you ask the question okay somebody oh, no so we see that uh, the original subdomain which was proposed by the bloom was a knowledge he says that uh, the knowledge is the lowest in the lowest hierarchy of the subdomain under the cognitive domain lowest hierarchy like that uh, when we want to learn something or when we teach something what we do first we used to remember the related concept related to the thing which we want to learn and for that uh, we simply remember it we simply know it like that uh, uh, when i am going to teach about the gravitation so we may remember the uh, definition of gravitation after remembering and after knowing more deep about that we are able to comprehend that that what are the different part of this and uh, that we are able to comprehend that and after having the comprehension ability we may not we may able to apply that in our day to day life where the gravitation is required then after having the ability of application we will be able to analyze that what are the different constituent part of the gravi uh, gravitation like that when we uh, start calculating the value of a small g and when we start uh, uh, solving the numerical related to the gravitation and the value of a small g capital g uh, the masses of the different object what are the different forces are acting and what are the difference like that we know that uh, what is the formula for that so when we are able to apply it when we are able to analyze and synthesize it then we are we will be able to solve the problems and when we are able to solve the problem then we will be able to evaluate that what are the things that i know and what are the things i still don't know and how i can improve it this was the original uh, subdomain that was uh, proposed by the bloom however later on it was uh, uh, revised by the intersen and the revision was based upon the two things first thing you might be seeing that uh, this is in the noun form and this is in the verb form the first you will see second you will th see that uh, this is instead of evaluation here at the top level it is a creating and there is a reshuffling of the things like that evaluation came here and synthesis instead of a synthesis here at the top it is creating so three things is there one is that from noun to verb another thing is that uh, at the top it is a creating and there is a shuffling so we will see all those thing why anderson has proposed this uh when we uh, why we have uh, uh, prepared this uh, uh, taxonomy we have prepared this taxonomy to write and decide the learning objectives that why we are teaching what we want to achieve through the teaching to decide that and in order to decide that when we will decide like that one decision may be that a student will be able to define isn't it define so define is what define is a verb and define can be achieved because noun is not doable doability is only with a verb verb can be done like that uh, eating it is a verb i can eat so through the eating i can do the activity of eating or walk 
by walking i can ensure the activity of a walking or a run through the running i can ensure the activity of a running like that remember through memorizing something i can ensure the activity of remembering so if we are doing all the exercise to write the objective then this domain should be doable and only ob, uh, verbs are doable not a noun are doable noun we cannot do like that my name is gautam so gautam is a noun so it cannot be done or uh, when i talk about the mobile mobile is a noun it cannot be done however mobile is also used as a verb but the thing which are noun that cannot be done so one of the shift is that he henderson has changed from noun to verb second was that uh, he was in opinion that uh, when the student is at the highest level of a domain a sub domain under the cognitive domain the student should be able to create we will see how it will happen when we are a lear uh, uh, learning something first step is that we remember the related concept we remember the related concept that is the remembering after remembering we start understanding without remembering understanding is quite impossible so first we remember and then we understand after understanding what is the gravitation you will be able to apply it and after applying you will be able to analyze the different constant part of the gravitation and then you will be able to evaluate where you are lacking what more that you want to add and if all the thing you are doing then you can create like a creating a model that shows the gravitation uh, drawing the picture which depicts the different activity involving the gravitation or the different you can identify also where the uh, more we feel the more weight or weightlessness that is also due to the gravitation no like a free falling body how much gravitation that will experience or whether it will experience or not so that was the proposal of the anderson okay so i think uh, since uh, one hour i was speaking so for some time i may have a question answer session and then i will continue for some time if you have any question you just ask now while moving through a elevator we feel those gravitation right ha ha weightlessness yes mm -hmm. when you will go down but when you will go up you will feel more weight uh, uh, for uh, uh, verifying that you can keep on weighing machine and uh, go up and down in the elevator you will find that when you will go down uh, the weighing machine will show less weight than the actual weight of you and when you will you go up uh, it will show more weight than you have isn't it that is uh, when you will go up and down anything else no so shall we proceed no respect yes, sir okay okay so uh, again i am sharing the screen like that here uh, when we see uh, this is uh, known as the action verb here you might be seeing or i i can zoom it also is it okay now or shall i increase the zoom i think that should be okay now na no? yes sir hmm. 
yes sir okay so first thing that we have seen that uh, in the lowest one was uh, low matlab uh, first subdomain under the cognitive domain was uh, remembering okay and uh, these are you don't focus now okay you see as of now this one that is highlighted ha ah, this one you focus as of now so these are the action verb uh, uh, right now i have told that uh, verb is only having a doability verb is only having a doability noun cannot be done and that's why uh, in order to write the objective we use the action verbs for writing the uh, objective related to remembering remembering is what recall or reorganize the specific information how we will ensure how we will know suppose that i am a teaching a gravitation isko aap aise samajhiye i am a teaching gravitation to you okay so how i will know that uh, you have remembered the definition of gravitation can anybody tell me how i will know that you have remembered the definition of gravitation if you can apply the equation no applying a equation is not required just i want to know that you have remember the definition or suppose that i am uh, teaching one poem so how i will know that you have remembered the poem you can recite actually ah, you can tell yes very good you can recite when you have recited a poem then i will know okay you have remembered but reciting doesn't mean that you understand what the poem says isn't it because anybody can remember with without understanding hai na i what is the meaning of recite recite means uh, you just uh, speak that that is the reciting suppose that uh, uh, i am uh, teaching a poem and uh, i have told you that uh, uh, tell the poem or speak the poem what is the poem and you have uh, started reading the poem that is the recitation okay so when you will recite then i will know that you have remembered but remembering does not guarantee that you have understood or when i will tell what is gravitation you will simply define and define kar diya but defining does not guarantee that you have understood what is gravitation so when we are writing a lesson plan so most of the time i see the students are writing uh objective related to remembering and they write at the end of this lesson a student will remember the definition of gravitation we are not supposed to write the way this way because here we have to write how you will know that they have remembered so what we can write a student will define gravitation A student can uh, name the things, है ना? Naming, defining, retrieving, locating is the like that in the map. I have given the map of uh, India, and where is Orissa? It can be simply remembered without understanding the different. things related to orissa you can say that in the in the map of india this is the place where orissa is located or in the map of orissa this is the place where bhubaneswar is located it doesn't required much so when it comes to remembering i have supplied the handout you go through the handout a lot of action verbs are available so you write by using those action verb like one of the um, objective may be student defines gravitation or when i am teaching a geography 
uh, where are the different states so student locate the orissa or student find the place of orissa in the map of uh, india so you will see that a different action verbs are written here which i have highlighted in the handout which i have given a lot of action verbs are there you have to choose the appropriate action verb and write the exact format of writing also i will tell in the later just after 10 to 20 minute so you have to write now come to understanding how you will know that student have understood the gravitation when they will cite some examples hai na like that uh, suppose that i am teaching mathematics and in the mathematics i am teaching the different types of a triangle so how i will know that you have remembered what is triangle when you will define what is triangle but when i will know that you have understood triangle different type of a triangle when you will classify different type of a triangle suppose that ki 100 picture of a triangle i have supplied you and you have to mark which triangle is of which type this is the isosceles triangle this is a scalene triangle this is obtuse triangle or a right angle triangle or acute angle triangle that is a classification when you are able to classify that means that you have understood so when you will write a lesson plan you don't write the objective that a student will understand the different type of a triangle no you write a student will be able to classify compare two type ka triangle hai so they will be able to compare the different properties of a two triangles they will be able to explain the property of a triangle they will be able to differentiate compare and contrast ah huh? that is you will be able to see this objective how you will be able to know that they are able to use the learned thing when they will be solving a problem like that uh, when they are solving a problem related to the gravitation so we will know that they are able to uh, apply the learned knowledge they are able to produce something they are able to carry out the explanations isn't it they are able to use the law of gravitation then we will know that they are able to apply similarly analyzing analyzing kya hai breaking information into parts you know different parts to explore understanding and relationship different part of a, a jo a, a small g hai what is what are the different part it involves uh, the distance between the two object and the masses of a two object and how these play role in deciding the value of a gravitation I mean, we talk about the gravitation. What are the deciding factor? The one deciding factor is the distance, and another deciding factor is the masses of those body and how they play. Then evaluation: how you will be able to know that what is your learning about the topic? That is a justifying and a decision or a course of action. When you will be able to judge, when you will to test. when you will have to experiment isn't it that is the evaluation and likewise the creation because the time is also running out so little bit i have to go short so this way i have we have seen that how we can uh, know the learning in the different uh, sub domain under the cognitive domain we have seen likewise there is a a uh, psychomotor domain likewise there is affective domain so detailed handout already i have supplied so that will be useful for you you go through that and uh, tomorrow is um, okay amit i will come to you so tomorrow uh, is again holiday and you go through all the handouts and uh, if you have any question 
I don't have any problem in organizing uh, again one session tomorrow in day or night time, whatever the choices is yours. You just uh, decide uh, with your friend, discuss with your friend and uh, just communicate me. I don't have any issue. If you have not agreed to have a session, you can ask in the next class when we will be meeting physically. But my request is that go through that so that you will have a clear cut even the doubt whatever you have or even the uh, queries understanding everything will be crystal clear okay amit you were raising your hand can you tell me amit yes sir ha huh, please tell no sir no question no question okay so uh, till now we have seen that uh, different uh, structures a uh, different part of a lesson plan and the bloom taxonomy we have also seen now uh, two things are left one thing is that uh, uh, we talk more about the um, 5e lesson plan we used to talk isn't it so we will see that what are the different part of a 5e lesson plan that we will be seeing and uh, after that uh, it will take a uh, 15 minute to discuss uh, what are the different part of uh, uh, 5b and then another 15 minute we will see the format of a lesson plan because all the things we have already discussed so 10 to 15 minute uh, the step of a 5 e lesson plan and then again 10 to minute 10 to 15 minute uh, the format of a lesson plan these two things we will see and then uh, we will finish this so um, come to this when we talk about the 5 e lesson plan as it is uh, we have seen that 5 e lesson plan is the constructivist lesson plan isn't it and when we talk about the constructivism this is the constructive constructive lesson plan and when we talk about the constructivism here students or the learner is the active member in the learning process they are the active member they are the main focus they are supposed to be engaged in the learning process and Teachers are supposed to be the facilitator. They will create the environment that we have already discussed in the classroom. And as uh, this 5B says that it have a five steps and each step starts with E. That's why it is named as a 5B. Isn't it? Nothing more special in the name. So, first thing that we have to see that the first E is engage. First uh, spelling, I think. Uh, first is that you have to engage. You have to engage the learner in the learning situation. Engagement means that you have to draw the attention of the learner in the learning process you have to draw and how you can draw the attention you can draw the attention through a various things you may show them a picture you may show them a video clip you may uh, allow to to listen some audio you may uh, allow to uh, observe some uh, experimentation that you will be demonstrating isn't it the point of saying is that through this activity, a student's attention should be drawn. Because drawing the attention of a student is not an easy task, first thing. Second thing, that unless or until the attention of a student will be not drawn, then they may not be able to interested so to sit for, uh, in your class for next 30 to 35 minutes because for the learner for the children it is a very uh, very much required that they find the teaching learning process useful for them they find that whatever their learning process will be happening it is useful for them that they find so you have to 
do a lot of activity. You may uh, show them a pictures, poster, storytelling, demonstration, audio video clips, or a role playing, so much of a thing. And who will do this? Obviously, teacher will do. Because you have to draw the attention. You have to settle down the student in the learning environment that you have created. The first thing. Again, the second thing is that how you will draw, isn't it? And why it is necessary to draw their attention? The one simple thing is that they must find whatever you are teaching is useful for them. And this can be done through the cognitive conflict. Cognitive conflict. Cognitive conflict. Cognitive conflict means. Board is not shared. Okay, okay, okay. I'm writing, but it is not shared. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you for uh, saying. I was writing and I was supposing that it is uh, shared. Okay, now you think it's visible. So uh, here I was saying that the constructivism, constructivism in the constructivism the students are the active part in the learning and here i was saying that uh, this five year lesson plan is a uh, comprised of a uh, five step and each step starts with e that's why it is 5e named as and here i was saying the cognitive conflict so in the cognitive conflict i was trying to say that here we try to address the necessity of this lesson because once you will address the necessity, then automatically student will be engaged in the learning. Like that, you think that um, uh, mo most of you may be having a, a smartphone. Or uh, earlier, before pandemic, when I talk, so school going children or uh, those who are in the 9, 10, 11, 12, they may not be having a, either, they may not be having a mobile phone or if they are having a mobile phone, it may not be a smartphone. But as, and uh, parent were also saying that what you will do with a smartphone, why a smartphone is required for you, isn't it? You focus your attention towards the study. But as we, uh, the pandemic came, uh, they have realized no. For the online classes, a smartphone or a tab or a laptop is very much essential. So automatically, it has motivated parents if they have a sufficient financial strength, they have started purchasing and giving it to their children. So this had automatically motivated because the situation came. Or when you realize that there is a something necessity for you, you automatically go and uh, purchase that or something when you find that it is a very much necessary for you so already you will start exploring through the google and learn about that because you find that this is required to you same thing happens in the cognitive conflict in the cognitive conflict we try to establish one thing that it is a necessary for you it is interesting and the second thing it is required for you one example I may cite like that when I am uh, teaching the buoyancy force in the class first time no, buoyancy force is uh, introduced. So while teaching the buoyancy force if I will go to the class and start teaching that this is the buoyancy force this was the identified by this, uh, this, this they may not be interested. I will ask and I will go with some equipment. I will go with a uh, water filled uh, tub filled with water and I will drop some nail. Suppose that it is of a 5 gram. Each nail is of 5 gram. I will drop and I will tell that is what is happening. They will say nah, since it is uh, made of iron it will sink. Then I will increase the weight suppose that it is 10 gram then i will say what will happen if i'll put they will say that it will sink i will now decrease 2 gram 1 gram 
they will say no it is a sink it will they will see that it is a sinking why because it is a conception that in the water when we put an iron it will sink now we will come with a ball and a ball which is made like this suppose that the weight of this ball is 100 g 100 g and i will put the ball they will find it is a floating then if the iron ball can float if the iron blade can float then why iron nail is sinking and they will find the existing knowledge that they have about which will sink and which will float in under which situation is not sufficient to explain this phenomenon and since the existing knowledge is not sufficient then they might be interested to know why it is happening that is the cognitive conflict cognitive conflict is a situation where your existing cognitive framework better to say or in the easy language the existing knowledge is unable to explain the phenomena which we have in our hand and that in terms motivates the student to explore more about the thing to know why it is happening and that's why the second step here is the explore explore now the teacher have allowed teacher have saw all the thing activity they have did and now the students are engaged now the student will are explore always remember engagement is done by the teacher then the next other jo four steps are there these are done by the students now the student will try to explore why it is happening for exploration they may consult the textbook they may go to the internet they may go to the library they may talk to the parents they may talk to the peer members they may talk to the teacher so many things are there they can observe they can experiment they can whatever everything they they will explore from the variety and here the teacher's role is to guide them because the teacher is the facilitator if textbooks are required if the experimentation is required then all those things will be arranged by the teachers and here a student will be exploring then after the exploring the third step is explain they will explain because they have explored that what is the reason behind the floating of a ball now they will explain that they have explored that this is the reason and here also the teacher has to guide them because whatever they they have explored it may not be all correct it may not be all correct so if there is a addition or a correction is required then that will be supported by the teacher but it will be done by the student fourth step is the elaborate 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 here a student again a student not a teacher again a student will try to find out that what are the other situation where this learning can be used where this type of a phenomenon is uh, happening isn't it so they will use the existing learning to the next different situation that is the exploration because whatever they will learn it may not be possible that this will be only applicable to there so here they will focus on giving a student a space to apply what they have learned isn't it so that it will develop a dear uh, deeper sense and then the fifth step is evaluate evaluate here what uh, the things that uh, we generally uh, have a misconception that in the evaluation phase here teacher will give a question or teacher will ask some questions and that uh, through that uh, we will evaluate that what kind of a learning has happened but here the evaluation have a deeper meaning during this phase 
teacher can observe their student and see whether they have a complete grasp of the core concept because the student we are doing all the things and teacher was observing teacher was supporting so through the doing all those activities teacher can observe not required that always we have a question answer evaluation a lot of evaluation processes are there and here also uh, we have to give the scope of the student to see whether they uh, we have to uh, provide them a scope to reflect on their learning that how they have learned what the difficulty they faced how they have come to a conclusion if they will be engaged in a different concept next time what kind of approach they will have to explore explain and elaborate the learned content isn't it so evaluation provides a scope for both teacher as well as the student so that is the important uh, thing that we must remember it is not only for the teachers it is also for the student okay now acha hmm. subhasri jena ha you want to say something subhasri subhasri you have raised your hand you want to say something subhasri jena or it might be pressed by mistake okay let it be now another uh, 15 minute i will take uh, to see uh, the lesson plan format amit and subhasri amit sneha sis raut sir ha tell me what is the question sir my question is ha uh, please please help me in the case of to study the motion to the student what is the process of the what is the process to engage the student in the case to learn them to sorry to teach them the subject motion Uh, so i think uh, uh, your question is that uh, you are uh, trying to ask that uh, you are interested to teach a motion okay motion you are uh, interested to teach and uh, you are thinking that how you can introduce the this motion lesson so sub, uh, in the motion a uh, different type uh, different type of uh, concepts are there like that one motion is the type of a motion rectilinear motion or which type of a motion or what is the motion ha ah, so uh, or a motion at a different surfaces what happens and uh, the effect of a uh, uh, friction gravitation and all those things so for uh, this uh, you may arrange activity to show the different type of a motion you may uh, have a, a glass ball and you may uh, allow Uh, the rolling of a ball on the different surfaces let it be the plane surface or let it be uh, the sandy surface or let it be uh, the surface where carpet are put on and you can uh, allow a student to uh, do the activity and observe that what is happening to the motion isn't it so uh, you can uh, um, arrange a different type of activities which will allow the uh, which will depict the motion of a different object in a different situations isn't it and then you may ask then suppose that uh, you are trying to show the motion under the um, uh, different surfaces so you may ask that uh, what is happening which ball went uh, which ball have traveled the long distance isn't it this type of a question you may ask to engage the uh, learner and this type of activity you may also ha huh, so basri you want to say sir mind out yes sir hmm. sir mind out was jo what is the difference between explanation and elaboration and ha that is a good question what is uh, the difference between elaboration and uh, explanation so here uh, 
i think uh, let me share this uh, once again so i can come there so here uh, when we were discussing about uh, this uh, um, this one when i was discussing so i have told that uh, in the explanation explanation student explain because first in the first page we have engaged the learner we have allowed them in the learning process then they have started exploring what is the cause what is the reason behind that isn't it and on the exploration they will explain that these are the thing which i have explored these are the thing like that i was giving example of the floating and sinking of a iron uh, material in the water so they will ex uh, explore that uh, what was the reason why ball was uh, floating where the nail was uh, sinking even though the weight of a nail is less than the weight of a ball isn't it so what was the reason so they will explore why how they will explore through the different thing like that they may talk to the teacher they may go to the library they may watch the youtube videos and so many things they will explore they may um, uh, experiment also they may have a tub of water and they will have a different type of object they will be putting and they will be observing what is the cause and what are the reason when the some object floats and when the some object sinks so they have all did all those things but by doing all the things they will come to a conclusion at the end of the activity and they have to come with a conclusion because they are not doing an endless activity however the activity is a pre planned by a teacher and it is supervised by our teacher also so teacher is also supporting them teacher is available them so they will come with some conclusion that why something is a uh, floating where is the something is a sinking and they will explain their reason that they have come with this reason that if this things is there then the object will float and the object will sink this is the explanation however the elaboration when we talk about the elaboration they will explain the learned thing in a new situation like that yes sir yes uh, uh, the uses of the learned thing in the new situation like that what are the what a why uh, in uh, we are not sinking we are floating in a dead sea like that there is a in a normal sea or in a normal water when we will go we may sink if we don't know the swimming but when we will go to the dead sea we will not sink or any object will not sink isn't it so why or in the air why something flies or something when we uh, throw it comes to the earth isn't it so why because all this concept is related to the buoyancy and the buoyancy force isn't it so they, that phase is known as the elaboration okay yes sir ha huh. anything else uh surya swarup i am seeing that you have raised your hand surya swarup da uh, yes sir uh, uh, sir uh, Sir, uh, there there is also uh, also like uh, the uh, the the chapters which focus on the atomic uh, energy, like uh, which we can uh, uh, means demonstrate in the real life. Mm -hmm. So what will he do? Like uh, the means uh, the um, the first uh, example of a atom and the visual uh, uh, representation of a atom. So it is very difficult, no? So because uh, uh, and uh, can we um, play video in the classroom for the engagement purpose? Yes, yes. I have told you that a lot of activity you can do, right? From that um, uh, role play, the storytelling, recitation, showing picture, audio video clips, experimentation, demonstration. Lot of thing you can do. Okay, there is a no harm. Anything you can do. which draw the attention of a learner which uh, uh, allows them to have a cognitive conflict isn't it yes tell me yeah. sir uh, another thing is like uh, sometimes uh, uh, like uh, if i am telling the optics means particularly i am telling optics because 
वे में भी गिव एग्जांपल ऑफ सम लेंस और मींस ग्लासेस दीज आर very well designed okay and we uh, always try to uh, in our 9 to 10 classes we always try to calculate the distance of the image or the height of the image but uh, in the real life it is very difficult to analyze like the image you can see the uh, uh, the uh, in the some some type of uh, means lenses you can't uh, actually find the images some is very uh, means what is that uh, imaginary images means you can see in the in some is real images you can measure their heights these are the problems we face in real life means yes, and, yes, uh, yes. Know, i so got your point uh, even though we face a problem with the uh, images and imaginary images and all those things that you were uh, talking about but uh, always rem- uh, remember that uh, whatever the images that is uh, formed in the optics like that uh, whether it is by mirror three types of a mirror we have a plane convex and convex concave and convex like that the lenses also so that can be demonstrated like that the imaginary formed by the concave or concave uh, convex lens or the image formed by the uh different type of a mirror that can be experimented and that can be shown like that by pin activity we have did all those thing in the high school level it is still there so uh, always remember uh, even though i am a person of ict uh, but uh, ict should not be misused as far as possible if it is uh, possible to organize the activity that we must do in the classroom if it is a possible suppose that uh, the operators are not available suppose that uh, it is not feasible or whatever the thing then it is good idea to have use the ict for those purposes sometimes uh, operators may not be available or sufficient number of operators are not available or something like that it cannot be done in the classroom so that is a different thing in that case we should use we must use full soft ict but uh, if it is possible then we uh, do the hands on experience okay then i am seeing uh, maheshwar sahu also have raised uh, raised your hand maheshwar yes sir ha uh, tell me sir uh, explore and explain ke beech mein jo difference hai na thoda samjhaye explain and explore just now i have explained huh You have you have explained uh, explain and elaboration के बीच में difference. Hmm. Then explain and uh, explain and explore. हाँ uh, explain and explore explain is that uh, while uh, discussing between explain and elaborate, I have also talked about the uh, explore because I have told that that time they will be exploring and after the exploring they will explain. I have told. if you will be absent minded then it's a different thing but when i was explaining the difference between the explain and elaborate i have uh, exp- uh, discussed all the steps i have told that uh, in the engagement you have to draw their attention and when you will draw the your attention then obviously student will try to explore what is the reason behind this i have not told this they will uh, try yes, to uh, find out the reason that is uh, the process of finding out the reason that is the process of exploration and for find out the reason they may consult a variety of the material variety of proportion they may talk they may consult they may do experimentation and all those thing and when they will do all those thing then they will come to a conclusion this is the same sentence i have repeated they will come to a conclusion and when they will come to a conclusion that why it was happening and that thing they will explain in, uh, in the next stage that is the explanation okay sir and i have seen also ankita i think she has raised her hand ankita Ank- uh, okay let it be so uh, only one thing is left that is uh, the format of a lesson planning so what we do it is already 846 so just tell that uh, what is your opinion anybody can tell 
so shall i continue now or uh, we can uh, i will send the format uh, through the whatsapp group i can send the format in the whatsapp group and uh, that is a very simple it is a uh, easily understandable and uh, sir uh, sir is abhi bhej dijiye hum dekh lenge ki kaise banayenge तो उसके बाद अगले क्लास में आप थोड़ा समझा समझा दीजिए नहीं हम समझा देंगे दैट इज नॉट अ सी ऑल द रिलेटेड कॉन्सेप्ट व्हिच वाज रिक्वायर्ड फॉर डेवलपिंग अ लेसन प्लान आई हैव एक्सप्लेन एवरीथिंग इन अ वेरी डिटेल्ड आई हैव एक्सप्लेन हाउ टू राइट ऑब्जेक्टिव दैट इज आल्सो सप्लाइड व्हाट आई विल डू टूडे नाइट आई विल सेंड यू द फॉर्मेट ऑफ अ लेसन प्लान ओके and you already you have did uh, the content analysis one content analysis you have did so and the uh, format i will be giving you go through the format okay and develop a lesson plan and next day when we will be meeting in the class everybody should be available with a lesson plan and what will happen when you will do na so let it be wrong aisa nahi hai ki what i am saying that everything be for perfect it and ready to submit no this is the learning process and we may commit mistake that is not a thing uh, subrat maharana just wait some time i will finish and i will come to you so uh, i will yes, uh, i will come uh, i will send you the lesson plan format you have already uh, did a content analysis and format is simple because all the steps i have discussed no so it is a just a structuring because suppose that introduction where you have to write theek hai so introduction is the engagement so engagement what is the engagement already i have told you isn't it like that the second is that exploration exploration is what already i have told you like that the first thing is that uh, learning objective what is the learning objective how to write learning objective already handout is with you explanation i have given and even though this uh, video will i will supply the link of this video by uh, tomorrow afternoon you expect so if somebody have a uh, some confusion you may uh, rewind this video like that someone was asking what is the difference they might not have heard clearly because in the virtual mode it may be possible but uh, when it will be in the video na you will be able to rewind and uh, watch so you go through that and that is the structure because everything is explained so only a structuring is required okay so you do that and whatever you will be you are able to do you do that and come in the next class and uh, what uh, the strategy we will have one one lesson plan i will be discussing and others will be seeing so suppose that uh, i am discussing the lesson plan of a subrat okay so subrat might have committed one mistake so that mistake i will be discussing so if the same mistake is with someone else like that the maheshwar or like that the surya isn't it so they will see okay so that mistake i have also committed and this is required so that will be a interesting uh, exercise so you do that that is my opinion yes is it okay and the subrat are you what are you uh, saying yes sir so my question is hmm. so silent reading comes in which stage silent reading uh, see uh, why we are doing a silent reading to know about the thing yes. ha na yes. suppose that you want to know about the gravitation ab silent reading bhi kar sakte hain baith kar ke main library mein kitab padhu what is a silent reading i will read some materials either on the internet yes. or in the mobile or in the textbook or in the newspaper hai na reading kahan karenge why and why we will read you are reading related to a gravitation kya hai gravitation so we are reading that so why you are reading to explore about the content why you are reading you are reading to know more about the content that is the exploration then i am saying akhil sahu yes akhil thank you sir mm. akhil sir my question is that yes sir my question is that uh, suppose you are making uh, the engage part of a chapter in the lesson plan mm -hmm. and and we know that uh, the 
lesson in the chapter won't be covered in a single period but it will still take more than two or three periods so how can we manage the engage part for each period see uh, this is a very good question because uh, students are also having a, a confusion suppose that you are uh, taking one topic and the fact is that a topic cannot be completed in one class because a cl- in school how much we have 30 35 minutes 40 minutes 40 minutes is for the secondary classes for a, a elementary classes it is a 30 to 35 minutes even though it is a 40 minute so if we are not able to complete then what see first class you have to engage the learner you have to doing a engaging learning uh, uh, engagement activity in the first class then the second class will be the continuation class so when the continuation class will go then suppose that ki three classes mein you have to cover the topic so first class you will have a engagement second and the third class you should start with a recapitulation and like that today when i have started this class i have started with that from where we have left in the physical class where we have left or when i am coming to a class you might have observed that before starting that what i have planned to discuss i start with that in previous class what we have studied so that they could establish a link between the classes or you have to settle the class also like that uh, uh, directly coming to the class and you will not uh, start speaking or doing the activity you have to build a rapo you have to build uh, the link between the students and you have to s- allow them to settle down and all those things so in the second and third class it will start with the recapitulation activity okay sir sir ha akhil tell me no, no, sir this is surya acha so sir so now now while preparing the while preparing the lesson plan mm-hmm. in the we are preparing for the whole chapter mm-hmm. and now when we will write the learning outcomes or the engaging methods mm-hmm. now we have to write for whole chapter right no no no, no. you can you have to write the everything for a individual class like the learning outcome for that first particular class second lesson mein second particular class third mein third particular class evaluation for first particular class second particular class and third particular class however the activities in the first class it will start with the uh, engagement in the second it will start with the recapitulation because in the first class something we are doing na that needs to be evaluated so evaluation ho jayega in first class everything you will be not teaching so some part you will be teaching so that part will be the objective so what is the difficulty in having the class wise objective and class wise evaluation there is no harm because in the class first class everything you will be not you are not covering na something is covering in the first class something is suppose that you are uh, teaching a uh, gravitation in the first class you are uh, talking about the concept kya concept hai what are the g and all those thing and in the second class you are uh, solving a numerical based on the gravitation so for the first class object to one objective may be the student will define the gravitation one objective ho gaya second class ke liye one objective may be the student will be able to solve the problem related to gravitation dono ke liye objective ho gaya first class ke liye assessment ho jayega aap unko allow karenge ki either define karo write karo recite karo tell bolo speak karo read karo सेकेंड क्लास के लिए असेसमेंट के लिए हो सकता है यू विल गिव वन प्रॉब्लम एंड यू विल अलाउ देम टू सॉल्व सो इट कैन हैपन देयर इज नो हार्म हाउएवर इन सम स्पेसिफिक केस यू आर फाइंडिंग डिफिकल्टी यू कंसल्ट मी और एनी टीचर्स वी विल टेल व्हाट वी कैन डू इन दैट स्पेसिफिक केस सो इफ द स्पेसिफिक केस इज कमिंग लाइक दैट इट्स ओके दैट वी कैन डू हां अमित सने अमित आई एम Finding your hand, Amit. Sir. Ah. Yes, sir. 
सर हम जब सेकेंड क्लास के लिए जाएंगे तो हम फर्स्ट क्लास में जो पढ़ पढ़ा चुके हैं उसके ऊपर में क्वेश्चन बेस करके उनको पूछ के क्लास को एंगेज कर सकते हैं हाँ बिल्कुल कर सकता है रिकेपचुलेशन में क्या है In what I am doing? I am not asking the question related to the previous classes. I am asking. You can ask question. That is the recapitulation. You can ask. Why not? You can ask. Absolutely, you can ask. No harm. Absolutely, you can do. Okay. Many in बहुत जगह में हम देखते हैं वो बोलता है कि वो बोलते हैं कि फर्स्ट about the gravitation in the second class i am uh, doing for the solving numerical so what is the harm in the asking uh, the value of a small g what is harm what are the different formula related to that what is the harm or what is the acceleration due to gravity how to calculate uh, acceleration due to gravity kinki if you will know this thing then only in the second class you will be able to solve the problem what is the harm no harm hmm koi harm nahi hai it is depends on the case to case lekin aisa nahi hai ki if the activities are possible if the things are possible and it is required to do lekin no gautam sir has told that you can ask question and that is a sufficient so i will simply ask question and i will go no you should not do that okay you should not do that in that case anything else thank you sir thank you for the so shall i stop this class here yes sir okay yes sir, yes, sir. thank you yes, thank, thank you for thank you sir. have a good thank night and thank you sir good night thank you thank you thank you sir thank you thank you Thank you sir. Thank you.